Hello, 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 and welcome back. Today is fan fiction day. Last night on my live that I did, I let you guys decide what ship I would read fan fiction for today, and any ship with Denki was like <laughs> winning by a long shot. And Kami Jiro, I decided to read Kami Jiro. I haven't done a Kami Jiro fanfic yet, so I decided on that one. I we, we decided collectively as a family last night on live if I should do lives every day, short lives every day, or if I should have designated days to do longer lives. And you guys picked longer lives on designated days, so I'm gonna figure some stuff out for designated days and times for lives. So I'm gonna figure some stuff out and let you guys know. I think it would also just be a lot easier to have that so that way you know it's consistent with you guys and it's consistent with me because I'm a big person who needs routine and I know that it would be a lot easier if you guys just knew what day and time I would be on and obviously it's gonna be a little different if like that day happens to fall on a holiday or something like that then it probably won't be but also I want to start doing twitch live streams soon so I have my computer back here I have the lights and everything um so I want to start doing that soon so we can play games together so we can watch stuff together um and actually do them because it, I feel like it'd be a lot more easier and a lot more fun to do twitch streams on a computer rather than just on my phone because we can do things together anyways if you hear the street it's because i have the window open because it's going to get hot i also have my blanket from roy keeping me warm and my cup from roy keeping me hydrated also i appreciate everything you guys have sent to me thank you so much i just want to say thank you again to everyone who sent me everything i literally wear the stuff and use the stuff every single day these lights Josie, always on, always on, always on. Um, the necklace I wear all the time, I haven't put it on because today is a um, cleaning day. So after I film this, I'm gonna get to cleaning my room. Let's get right into the fan fiction, shall we? It is called Home is Where Jiro Is by Iconica01. It was published in 2018 on April 29th. It is 5,614 words and the summary is, Kaminari always finds excuses to crash at Jiro's place, claiming her sofa is softer than his bed. That and that, she has to relax. Jiro constantly raises an eyebrow but never kicks him out. This is how they deal with each other, or the five times Kaminari crashes at Jiro's place, and the one time he doesn't. The first time, Jiro is slightly amused, but mostly sour and annoyed. She had a rough day, first the afternoon patrol under the merciless rays of the, sun, of the summer sun, then being called in for help against a long-range fighting villain during the evening. She only arrived home an hour ago, heated up whatever leftovers she could find in her mostly empty fridge. Shopping could wait until tomorrow. She doubted her sore feet would even fit in any shoes that she owned at this point, and dined in her empty apartment. Plunging into her sofa and tuning the guitar, she doesn't hate living alone in the least. Momo asked her if she wanted to move in together and share an apartment, and while that would have been more practical from a financial standpoint, Jiro couldn't accept the offer. Momo was one of the few people Jiro felt comfortable around, and not even her presence allowed Jiro the freedom to plug in her guitar and play a melancholic raw ballad. There's something oddly comforting about filling silence with her own notes overwriting the sound of her heart beating in her ears with music. Because for Jiro, there is never silence in a broadly accepted sense. Jiro's silence is listening to her own heartbeat, courtesy of her cork, and matching her breasts to the rhythmic pounding in her chest. She keeps the lights in her living room off because light itself is as loud as sound and all she needs to see the chords is the faint moon rays although she's pretty sure she doesn't need to look at her guitar to play at this point. Still, she likes being bathed in the gentle silver light of, of the moonlit sky and finds solace in the fact that just as her, the moon has to reflect the sun in order to shine. So when her phone lights up to disturb the, har the harmonious melody, Jiro clicks her tongue in displeasure. Her brow creases in a frown when she picks up her phone from the coffee table and sees the image of Kaminari's dumb electrocuted face taking up the screen. Pikachu, she states she picks up, stifling a groan and waiting for him to spout his nonsense. She glances at the clock and decides to give the conversation a maximum of three minutes of her time. No, it's me. Oh. Kirishima's voice surprises Jiro from the other end of the line and her frown deepens. What had this idiot done this time? She doesn't even need to ask because Kirishima helpfully supplies. We're out drinking and I'm afraid Kaminari's wasted. Jiro hears a faint protest in the background, doubtlessly Kaminari, vehemently and slurring proclaims, no way dude, sure man. <laughs> Kirishima peacefully says, and then back to Jiro, anyway, I'm afraid to leave this guy home alone, so can I leave him to you? Why don't you let him crash at your place? Jiro asks, not to be mean, but out of the genuine curiosity. 
Kirishima lives closer to the bar they always go to anyway. Kaminari once coerced her into going there. Good drinks, but way too loud for her taste. Oh, there's a pause and Jiro wonders if Pikachu got himself into trouble with Kirishima or dropped his phone. And then he stutters, I, I kind of have someone over and no, no more bets. <laughs> he mummers. It takes Jiro a moment to remember Bakugo going crazy earlier in the week about Kirishima and Ashido finally dating, so she spares him the embarrassment. Sure, she says, bring him over. He's already dumb when he's sober. <laughs> he's already dumb when he's sober. I fret for his life when he's drunk. <laughs> Kirishima laughs good naturedly. I'll bring him to you shortly. And then thanks, Jiro. Mm. She says before cutting off the call. Her phone blinks back to blackness and Jiro looks around her empty and dark apartment and gets off the creaking couch. She has a feeling it's too good. It's going to become very loud and full of light as soon as Kaminari steps in. As she cleans around the living room and takes out a pillow for the drunkard, Jiro feels an incoming headache. She and Kaminari are polar opposites by nature. His quirk electricity, light in and of itself. He's loud and obnoxious, always bubbling and laughing or making the others laugh. Hell, he even has golden hair which is highlighted several times in the first week upon their meeting all those years ago in the contrasting color of purple. Jiro scratches her head, defeated, and lets out another long sigh. How did she ever become friends with Pikachu? The answer, she knows, is simple, and the doorbell wakes her up from her contemplation, and she opens the door to a Kirishima holding Kaminari's arm over his shoulder, supporting half of his body weight. It's spinning, <laughs> Kaminari says, instead of greeting. And Kirishima smiles nervously. Thank you, Jiro. She's already regretting her decision when she nods and takes Kaminari from Kirishima's arms. <laughs> she isn't prepared for him to slump his whole body weight on her and staggers, but quickly finds her footing and looks at Kirishima over Kaminari's shoulder. The redhead looks mildly concerned. Are you sure you? I'll be fine, she assures him with a wave of her free hand and the other one wrapped around Kaminari's torso so he doesn't slip away from her grip onto the hard floor. It wake the neighbors. Him though, she adds, pointing to the drunk man. Not so sure. Sorry. Kirishima rubs the back of his neck apologetically. Should have kept a better eye on him. Nah, it's his own fault for being an idiot, Kaminari mutters. Muffled protests into her shoulder, but she ignores him. One more concerned look to his friend later, Kirishima bids a goodbye and leaves. Now alone with the blonde, alcohol reeking mess, Jiro ponders her op options. She could simply ditch him on the couch and go to her room, which she is very tempted to do. Given how annoyed she is with the situation and how much her feet hurt, carrying the weight of another person doesn't, does nothing to better the situation in that regard. But judging from the smell alone, or who will puke sooner rather than later, and she's not gonna let him choke on his own vomit, or even worse, dirty her carpet. <laughs> Literally me. Don't vomit on my floor. So she settles on dragging him to the living room and sitting down on the couch, and sitting him down on the couch, which proves to be an adventure as Kaminari either stubs his foot into the wall and yelps in her ear. Jiro considers herself a hero simply for not slapping him, or he almost falls to the floor, giving Jiro a fright for her life. In the end, he remembers that he has arms and circles him around Jiro's waist. <laughs> as she half lifts, half drags him to the improvised bed where he plops lifelessly. She's about to give him a glass of water when he miraculously comes back to life and grabs her wrist. Jiro, he slurs, and she's really trying hard not to laugh because he looks even more stupid when he's <laughs> than when he's electrocuted. You're spinning! He talks like an excited four-year-old and tries to spin his head but gets dizzy quickly so he stops, frowning at the particular spot on Jiro's carpet then whips his head to her too quickly and narrows his eyes as if there's too much to take in when he just wants to focus on Jiro's face. She closes in on him and asks, Am I still spinning? He squint, he's squinting, but manages an uncertain no before his face goes back to normal and happily explains, exclaims, Jiro, you have beautiful eyes. She ignores the rapid and out of sync thumps in her heart and shakes her head, stating the obvious, You're drunk. She gets up, she gets up to head into the kitchen, but forgets about Kaminari holding her hand. He looks up at her, accusingly, as if she's leaving him behind. With another sigh, she's lost count of them tonight. She explains, I'll get you a glass of water and I'll be right back, so stay here. She tries leaving again, but there's a tug on her wrist. Promise you'll come back? She's about to snap a snarky comeback, but then she meets his puppy dog eyes again and gives in because there's genuine fear in them. Yes, she promises. He still looks doubtful, and so she adds, a pinky promise and everything. And then he lets her go, satisfied with her answer, 
Jiro walks into the kitchen on autopilot. It's strange because she can't get the intensity of Kaminari's look out of her mind. Although he's drunk and disheveled, and the last word she'd use to describe his chain of thoughts is coherent, there's something raw about his emotion that hits her like a truck and makes her head pound and her heart rate increase. She searches for a pill for Kaminari and decides to swallow one herself. When Jiro walks into the living room again, she sees Kaminari curled up like a real Pikachu on her couch. She doesn't allow herself to think the sight is endearing because she knows that that will open a rabbit hole for her to free fall into. So instead, she drops a pill into his palm and puts the glass of water on the table. After he downs the liquid and ingests the pill, Jiro dare asks, why did you get so drunk? She expects a Kaminari-like answer like, wee, or why not? Actually, she expects anything but what he says. Because I was sad. <gasps> Oh my god, is this gonna make me feel something? Because I'm not down for that today. <laughs> oh. She feels a weird pang in her chest, and the urge to hug him almost makes her get up and smell his aftershave and the beer he had again, but then quietly adds, I think I was lonely. Lonely? Jura repeats and tries to understand how that would be linked to an ever, an ever energetic Kaminari. He simply nods. Kirishima has Ashido now. He eventually says, staring down at his empty glass of water. And Bakugo is focused on being the number one hero. Jiro watches his hands and sees that they're trembling slightly, and he grips the glass tighter. Saro is in Kyoto now, and I'm here. His voice breaks with the last word. Jiro's body reacts before he her actions with her brain, and her hands clasp Kaminari's. He sees her eyes finally lock with hers glassy and threatening to water. I'm here too, she says and squeezes Kaminari's hand gently. She's not so good at this comforting thing. She's a loner and she's fine with that. Kaminari, on the other hand, is a people person and feeds off of others' love and attention. So she adds, I may not be the most fun person to have around, but Kaminari cuts her off with, his, with a hug so tight that Jiro has to fight for breath for a moment and wonders when he got so muscular and how he could use this moment, this amount of strength, when he's wasted. She still doesn't exteriorize any of her thoughts though. She hugs him back, running a hand through his fluffy hair. Thanks. Kaminari's breath ghosts over her neck. She hums in return, taming unruly hair. And Jiro? He raises his head from the crook of her neck to meet her eyes. You're fun. The second time it happens, Jiro is much less annoyed and more surprised because this time he's sober. Fightingly, it's nighttime, 2 a.m. to be exact, because that's when their shift ends and they let Todoroki and Yamomo take over. Shoto looks sleepy and Kriedi's hair is sticking up from her ponytail, but neither of them complain about having to get up at midnight to protect the city. Jiro guesses it's because they're doing it together, because night shifts give them the privacy that they never let others know they long for. Jiro steals a glance at Kaminari, who slowed down to walk next to her. It's curious, she thinks. Pikachu is always loud, but for once they're together in silence. The broadly accepted meaning. Of course, but the absence of nonsense spouted out of the blonde's mouth is nonetheless jarring. Jiro decides she enjoys this. A small part of her is surprised to find it to find this unsurprising. It's comfortable, and simply knowing he's at her side makes her feel safe. They're in their hero outfits, and to the few people who still lure around on the streets, their earphone jack and electro bowl. To her, they're Jiro and Kaminari, walking together in the light of the moon and enjoying the sort of tranquility Jiro never thought she could share with anyone. And then Kaminari just has to ruin everything and ask, Hey Jiro, can I crash at your place? So many responses run through Jiro's head. Can you what now? Or I don't know, can you Pikachu? <laughs> There's, it's very tempting to ask if he has short circuited himself or was born an idiot, but all she blurts out is, huh? We're just off patrol and your house is nearby and I'm sleepy and I'm hungry and you cook really well and your couch is softer than my bed. It's like Kaminari broke the dam to the barrel where he stored his words and Jiro sees herself forced to stab him with her jacks in his chest. He stops and rubs the place where she hit him, but doesn't bother to take his eyes off of her. Feeling backed into a corner, Jiro resorts to her ultimate blade, sarcasm. Did you have a list prepared? <laughs> There's a moment of hesitation before Kaminari asks more than states. Maybe? Jiro bites her lower lip to keep <laughs> in both a sigh and a chuckle because he's still staring at her. So can I? He asks again. 
Jiro ignores the blood rushing to her face, probably leaving her brain because she finds herself shrugging away and answering, oh fine. Really? <laughs> His face lights up instantaneously, and he's smiling so widely that Jiro's concerned. He'd break a muscle. Yeah, whatever, she says. But she, what she thinks though is that Kaminari's the sun and she's the moon, and she wonders if they can ever really coexist. Oh my god. You suck, <laughs> Jiro tells Kaminari as he attempts playing her guitar and fails dramatically. He's sitting on her floor, back pressed against the wall, wearing one of her oversized teddies. Jiro always thought she'd barf in a sight as domestic as this, but with Kaminari she feels like laughing because he's pouting. <laughs> because his pouting face is so obviously ridiculous. You do it like this, she says, and moves an ear jack over to one of her cords, making them vibrate in the air, surrounding them. Kaminari tries imitating, but imagines, but manages to somehow mess it up. Granted, he's not that bad. He's a decent guitar player and the song is difficult, but Jiro would never pass on the opportunity to pretend her ears are bleeding and make fun of him. He rolls her eyes at her. You do it then. She claims back her guitar and confidently states, watch and learn, Pikachu. Jiro hits the first chord and then allows the song to flood the room out of her fingers, out of her guitar. The notes pierce through the silence and mingle together in a harmonious cliffs of dubber. This is Jiro's travel piece and the kind of song she'd listen to while driving, if she had a license. With the windows down and the wind playing mindlessly with her hair. It's the type of lyricless song Jiro finds herself resonating with because words aren't the only sound that can exp express feelings. She doesn't know why she chose this song when Kaminari picked up her precious guitar and asked him to teach her how to play something. Asked her to teach him how to play something. But then she doesn't know why he made the request or why she's fine with him touching her instruments without feeling the desire to kill him either. So she doesn't question it much. She just closes her eyes while pinching the chords and has to learn. She has learned by heart and imagines and imagines the empty winding highway driving through bronze forests and the wind whooshing past her ears, swallowing the sound of her heartbeat and the sound of words and leaving behind the essential music. And then the song comes to a close and Jiro opens her eyes and looks and she sees the sun, the sun staring back at her with his golden eyes, shimmering in the, <laughs> the dim light of the lamp. And Jiro's lost because he's not blinding her. Instead of feeling she needs to avert her eyes, Jiro feels that the only thing she can see is him, like the sunset. And she begins to wonder whether toning down is the price he has to pay to be with the moon for a short amount of time. And then the sun speaks and it goes back to being Kaminari again. Can I try that? Sure. The third time, Jiro is less surprised and more panicked and worried because he's not only sober, but he's also bleeding. It's evening again when Jiro's stomach growls and she opens up the fridge on her never-ending quest to find uneaten food in the depths of the freezer in search, surprising herself. Her search is fruitful and she ends up frying tempura and cooking rice. It's basic and it'll fill her stomach before she sets on the real journey, the trip to the supermarket. As she sits down, she sets down to eat. She acts as a responsible pro hero and turns on the TV to stay up to date with the, news, the, the newest attacks. A decision which she comes to regret not even two minutes after stuffing her face with bland rice. Jiro immediately drops her fork with a loud sound on her plate because on the screen there is doubtless evidence of the newest raid and the title, Dangerous Villains. Three heroes gravely injured, two in critical condition, playing in yellow letters over a red background over the footage of the fight. And the unmistakable blonde of a certain Pikachu is in the foreground. Jiro feels her head spinning and wastes no time in grabbing her phone as fast as she can with trembling hands. She wills her hands to cooperate, but they're shaking more with each second that she spends staring at Kaminari's contact and his stupid dumb face. A stupid dumb face she wants to see more than anything right now. Maybe the gods aren't merciful with Jiro all the time, but they take pity on her now because the doorbell rings and she knows that's Kaminari before she sprints to widely open it. Hi, a ragged voice greets her. Sure enough, he's there. She'd like to say he's checking her out, as he usually does, and then finger guns her, but she would be lying because he's looking at her with one eye that isn't swollen and purple, and he grimaces when he tries to smile, probably from the pain caused in the deep cut near his mouth. His cheeks are covered in cuts and bruises, and there's, this, there's an especially la nasty injury on his forehead near the line of his hair that may scar. The rest of his body is even worse. 
This hero costume covered in flesh blood, but he's still alive. And he's here. Why are you here? Are the first words that leave her mouth. And they cut her throat into pieces like broken glass. Why aren't you in the hospital? He manages a crooked smile with his slightly less covered and bruises cheek. Jiro feels her knees dangerously close to weakening too much. So when Kaminari opens one arm to a tentative invitation, she, she grabs onto him, hoping he has no broken ribs because she can't control the force of her hug. I promised to go to the hospital after I saw you. He whispered into her ear, voice raspy but unmistakably his. I wasn't as injured as the others, so they let me go, and I promised I would go for a checkup in 24 hours. Stop talking, you idiot, Jiro whispers as she digs her nails into his back, where she can feel him closer, not caring in the least that the blood is rubbing off on her favorite sweater or that his shoulder is damp with her worries. Never scare me like that again, she says. I was worried, was left unsaid. I'm sorry. She feels him smiling that crooked grin into her hair and holds onto the sound of his beating heart. Can I crash here tonight? Only if you promise to call me the next time you need help. She feels his lips on her forehead and leans into the touch. I promise. A shaky smile blooms on her lips and she glimpses up at him through her eyelashes. Then let me get my first aid kit. You look terrible. <laughs> The fourth time, Jiro isn't so much as panicked as she is confused and dumbfounded because he isn't bleeding and he carries a backpack with him. I'm declaring movie night, is all he says, as explanation as he walks past her and into her living room and settles down on the couch as if they were, as if it were his own house, casually unpacking his backpack. Jiro follows him after locking the front door. Jack's prepared to stab him until he jumps out the window, but they freeze halfway when she sees him pulling out DVDs. What's that? She asks, quirking an eyebrow and pointing with her jacks to the case in his hand. It's La La Land! <laughs> Kaminari beams at her, barely containing his bouncing just like a kid. Yamomo recommended it to me and I thought we could watch it together. He proceeds to completely ignore Jiro's gaping mouth as he places two bags of instant popcorn, three bags of chips, and... <laughs> and a dose of Jiro's favorite Dr. Pepper along with a Fanta on the coffee table. Jiro's coffee table. Puzzled is too mine to describe what Jiro is feeling at the sight of his natural behavior. But what truly blows her mind is that she herself finds he fits the landscape of her apartment. He shines in a way that doesn't make her want to wear sunglasses, but just bask in the warmth he radiates. You can't just walk into my house and declare a movie night, she protests, not as angry as she has the right to be. This could be considered trespassing. Once again, Jiro fails to sound persuasive. If anything, it sounds like she wants to convince herself of the absurdity of the situation. Kaminari graces her with a sideways glance and one of his electric smiles. You need to relax every now and again, Jiro, he declares as if it's her being absurd. Think fast, he shouts and quickly throws her the Dr. Pepper dose before returning his undivided attention to the backpack content. Besides, I bought the movie and the food and you provide the accommodations. <laughs> it sounds only fair to me. He smiles and flickers the TV to life with the press of a button. Jiro mutters, you could have at least bothered to give me a heads up under her breath and is sure it went unheard until Kaminari replies. But then you would have said you were busy or something. He gets up to put the CD into the player, leaving Jiro to blink at him dumbfounded and stick her tongue out childishly behind his back. <laughs> I even chose a musical, Kaminari says, still turned to her as he fumbles with the settings. Figured you would like it. More than his barging into her apartment, Jiro was taken back by this line, nonchalantly thrown into the space between them by hitting her with the impact of the good delivered punch. She could never quite predict Kaminari's moves and words, just like the trajectory of the lightning bolt is unknown until it hits you. When he turns to smile dazingly at her and sits down on the couch patting the place next to him, she sighs. Figures the moon also has to make sacrifices to spend time with the sun. <laughs> He's so cute, bro. The movie begins just as you'd expected, your typical love-hate relationship too. Kaminari still coos and exclaims, ah, every now and again, nudging Jiro when something cute happens on the screen. Did you see that? They're dancing, Jiro, dancing! She rolls her eyes and bites back a smile at, at his endearing excitement by eating a fist of popcorn. She doesn't realize how close they're sitting until Kaminari turns away from the screen to point something out. One time and bumps his nose into her forehead, gently brushing his lips over the tip of her nose. Jiro blushes instantaneously and Kaminari suddenly becomes very engrossed in the movie again, forgetting whatever it was he wanted to tell her. If Jiro wasn't too embarrassed to look anywhere but his face, she would have noticed a dust of pink matching her blush. Not even a minute later though, his fingers find hers and intertwines them. Jiro bolts and finally looks at them. His eyes are glued to the screen, so she gently leans against his shoulder in return and pokes her jacks together. 
The movie is lost to her for the next 10 minutes. She doesn't remember how the movie ended. Perhaps she fell asleep before its end. Or she was too focused on Kaminari's warm hand touching hers to care enough. What she does remember though, is that she didn't get electrocuted when he touched her. And instead of the immediate rejection she always expected to feel when their skins brushed, she felt attraction, acceptance. A feeling she doesn't want to name takes over her and she chooses to close her eyes and focus on Kaminari's presence and the sound of, this, of his heartbeat, loud and clear in her ears, matching hers. The fifth time, Jiro isn't as much confused as she is embarrassed because he doesn't invite himself to stay over. Instead, she's the one who launches the suggestion. Jiro never liked the press. Hiro's underwent training for that too in their third year at UA, but she's still uncomfortable answering questions with flashes blinding her and the microphones shoved in her face fighting for her attention. She holds nothing against the journalists, they're just doing their job, but she surely appreciates some more personal space and less shouting. Kaminari always throws around his, it's just like getting up on stage and singing. You just have to face the music. Line with a wide, reassuring smile, but her stomach is still against the whole invasion of privacy deal, and clearly states so by making Jiro want to throw up. She's at least grateful she isn't alone. Kaminari's there. Her subconscious snorts, he's always there when you truly need him. Another flash blinds the both of them and she hears a voice in the back of her head reminding her to smile, which she does, as much as she can without being creepy anyway. She slowly finds her footing in the next question and has enough confidence to square her shoulders and exchange a glance with her fellow hero who winks subtly, and then interviewers just have to ask the questions she dreads the most. You and Electro Bolt, you're like day and night. How do you maintain just a strong partnership? Jiro feels her smile crackle and digs her fingers into her palms, trying not to let the impact of the question show on her face. After all, they aren't saying anything she doesn't know, so why does it hurt her so much to be heard out loud? She knows Kaminari is her polar opposite, and the fact that their, that their partnership and somehow friendship has been lasting up to now is mostly thanks to the efforts he constantly makes to tone down around her. But when she opens her mouth to deliver a casual, I know, right? We work so well together, a mystery to us too. She hears a voice clear and steady and piercing through all of her fears. Is that the impression we leave? Kaminari chuckles, but it's forced. His tone is playful when he continues, but his eyes sparkle with seriousness. I've always felt we're more like lightning and thunder. Hmm, this is so pretty. This is so pretty. <laughs> oh my god. We come as a result of the same phenomenon, like a special package. Except it's actually me who's slower. Right, earphone? Her lips are peeled into a sheepish smile when he locks focused eyes with her. So she plays along. True, I could use the lightning speed every now and again. I promise to work on it. <laughs> he laughs, jovingly. The reporter soon joins him and the, interviewer can, and the interview continues without a hitch. Kaminari's seriousness is so imprinted, imprinted in Jiro's mind for the rest of the reportage and she smiles naturally when she remembers that Kaminari can't lie. Falling into his pace, she picks up where he left off and elaborates on the answer. Well now that's done, Kaminari lazily yawns as he stretches his arms behind his, his back and strolls next to Jiro, taking big and slow steps. He's like a huge lazy cat and Jiro pictures him with whiskers, with, which elicits a, a giggle out of her. The blonde gives her a puzzled look. You seem to be in high spirits, he notices. Confusion painted all over his tired features. Is that so surprising? Jiro folds her arms more out of curiosity than anger. A bit, out, he exclaims as she jabs him with one of her jacks in his side. I didn't mean that in a bad way. You just don't like being in the public eye. Oh, is all she can come up with. He's right, but he's so oblivious because the cause of her good mood is none other than him. She bites her lower lip and mulls over the line, over his line for a while before words slip out. Did you really mean what you said back there? Hmm. Kaminari looks at her sideways, casually asking, Oh, you mean the team part? Yeah. He hums, locking his fingers behind his neck and looking up at the evening sky, painted with a dusk of yellow that turns purple towards the margin of the margins of the skyline. I really do think we make a good team. Oh my god, I'm having flashbacks to clans. We are a good team. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> He repeats quietly, his eyes glued to the setting sun. Jiro follows his look and rests her eyes on the sky, bleeding purple. Do you ever feel that we're too different? She isn't sure whether she said the question too loud or not, but at this point she wouldn't be too surprised if Kaminari was reading her mind. Sometimes, he admits. She doesn't jab at him with her jacks, but then again, it's not necessarily bad. It means we have more perspectives, and you're always there to save me when I need you. A smile tugs at the corner of her lips, so bright Jiro almost forgets the sun is setting. And he finally looks at her. 
So thank you, Jiro. It's probably him that saved her, she thinks. Not just during the missions or the villain raids, but by shedding a light on her without her even asking, and by barging into her life when she wouldn't even let herself in. She says none of that, though, because it's too cheesy for even Pikachu. She's positive she'd melt into oblivion if she voiced her thoughts. Instead, she settles for, do you want to crash at my place? Pikachu, what's with this mess? Jiro groans as she steps into his room. <sighs> Shirts buttoned and unbuttoned or hangers on hangers are disheveled, red and blue and yellow all thrown around his room, especially all over his bed. She looks over his shoulder at Kaminari who scratches the back of his head in embarrassment. I didn't know what to wear this morning, <laughs> he asks more than states. He's wearing ragged jeans and one of those ACDC t-shirts now, matching Jiro's Guns N' Roses look. Jiro doubts she's imagining the out-of-place pink on his cheek and allows herself to find it endearing. One of her jacks extends to grab a shirt that is that has attracted her attention ever since she entered the room. Purple? She questions, a hint of irony in her voice as her eyebrows quirk up. Whoa! <laughs> Kaminari sheepishly says, I thought we could match if you wanted a yellow shirt or something. Jiro's face matches him with a... <laughs> With a blush of her own, and her hand and her hands find him, intertwining their fingers. I don't have many yellow clothes. Do you want to go shopping tomorrow? Pikachu's face lights up with a smile. That lights. Oh God, I can't. <laughs> that lights the stars and gives the moon light to reflect and squeezes her hand. Sounds like a plan. It's not the first time when Jiro sleeps at his place. Neither is it the last. Kaminari still crashes on her couch every now and again and complains about about not being let to sleep on her soft bed. Jiro tells him his house is messy every time she visits and always uses her jacks to give him a hand by cleaning and cleaning. By now she isn't surprised or scared or embarrassed when he spends the nights over anymore. She simply feels at ease and pulls out her guitar to sing Cliffs of Dover which he's learnt by heart. When he asks her to move in together, Jiro remembers why their relationship works. It's because they're both electrons, crashing into each other to admit thunder and lightning, and because they both love the storms. This is your first time writing a Kami Jiro fan fiction? First of all, that was amazing. <laughs> oh my God. That was the first time I ever read the author's notes. That was your first time? That was literally, I felt so many things reading that. So many, maybe it's because if I were if, if a ship were to have a child, I would be their child. I would be Kamijiro's child. That was literally the cutest thing in the entire world. Um, my, my, my sky, space, love, and heart could not handle the analogies. <laughs> that was so f***ing beautiful. Oh, oh my god. I am so glad that I got the opportunity to read that because that was just wow. That, wow. Wow, man. Wow, because that was so good. Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a big old thumbs up. If you're new, you can subscribe and click the bell. That way you get notified every single time a new video comes out. I post on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. I will start streaming and on certain days and certain times, so watch out for that. I have to figure it out. I have to get a planner. I have to do a lot of stuff. <laughs> but I'm going to get everything like sorted out so we can kind of have a routine, so it can be consistent, so I can talk to you guys, you know, and we can have our like... Because I feel like I'll go through times where I like stream a lot, and then I won't stream at all, and then I'll stream a lot, and then I won't stream at all. And and then I have withdrawals because I like to talk to you guys because you're my friends, you see? So that's the whole like problem and I need, <laughs> I need to just like organize my stuff. So I'm going to organize it and everything. Joop Joops, you want to come say bye bye? Oh, he dies. Oh, boo boo. Do you want to say bye bye? So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was so, so cute. I love Kami Jiro so much. Remember to stay safe, do your homework and drink water and we will see you in the next one. Say bye bye, Joop Joops. Bye bye. Mm. Bye guys. Wow. <gasps> I love the sky. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I love Jiro. I'm somehow Jiro and Denki. I love it. No, it's just dust. No, I think I just got some space. Oh, an eyelash. <sighs> Make a wish. I have a, my window literally cracked like this much and I'm freezing. <laughs> I am in a t-shirt, but like if you see me wrapped up in this blanket, mind your business. <laughs> this is literally me. <laughs> Hi, baby. You wanna say hi, babish? Oi, this is my babish. This is my baby, Joop Joops. You my baby, Joop Joops? Yeah? Mama loves you. He likes me. Anyways. You purring because mommy loves you? Yeah? Mommy loves you? Oh, God. You are my son, and I love you so much. You're my little planet. Those are the... Hi, baby. And throws her, you are just the cutest little thing in the entire world, and I love you so 
much. <laughs> yes, baby. What is it? Oh, you like mama. Yes, you do. Are you cold? You're cold. Let me feel your butt. Oi, thank for you, pa. Yeah, that's okay. You want to come sit in mommy's lap? Come sit in mommy's lap. Come on. Mommy will keep you warm. Mommy has a nice cover. Yeah? You do good boys. <laughs> of a lightning bolt is known. And of his heartbeat. Hi, baby. He's like, <laughs> look at him. He's so cute. You like mama so much, don't you, baby? He's my baby. You want it? Look, mommy's legs are warm. You can stay here. You want to stay here? Put those. Oi. Oi, oi, oi. You're so pretty. Yeah? Oi! <laughs> yes, babies. What do you need? You need the pets? You need the rubbish? You need the rubbish right now? While mommy's, while mommy's filming the video? Just okay. With the rubbish. Whenever you want. You call the shots, babies. Yes, babies. Thanks, son. If this is <laughs> this is the only thing, <laughs> you're stuck, baby. Jupiter, baby, your nails are good. It's okay. It's okay. Look, you're okay. You are my child. You are my child, bro. I love you with every every piece of my being. I love you so much. You know that. You know, mommy loves you. Oh God, we're almost done. He just keeps distracting me. Yes, babies. Yo, babies. You're stuck again? No, you're not stuck no more. <laughs> this is gonna be a compilation of like me and Jupe. <laughs> I'm just like, Jupe, you want the rubbish? You want the rubbish? You want the rubbish? You want the rubbish, don't you, babies? That's okay. You can have the rubbish anytime you want, okay? You can get the rubbish anytime you want. Hmm? Yeah. Mommy loves you, Bubush. You wanna sit on Mama's lap? No, you wanna go. Okay, that's okay.